Now we're going to go through these four questions, following again the rules of indices. So we're going to put a uh, power of 1 there, so we're going to have x to the power of 3 plus this 1 plus this 8. Why are we adding these? Because they have the same bases and we're adding the powers. So x to the power of 4, 3 plus 1 is 4, 4 plus 8 is 12. That's your answer. So that's why that's worth one mark. Okay, next question. I'm going to write this as a fraction. Okay, next part is I'm going to have to subtract because this is second law of indices. So these have the same bases. So take away the 5, 5n. Five take away 5 is 5n to the power of 4. And that's your answer for that question. That's worth one mark as well. This question. So I'm just going to write this here. We've got 2a cubed b times 8a squared b to the power of 6. What are we going to do? We're going to multiply with the same thing. So 2 times 8. Now you can do that in your head if you wanted to. Then we're going to go times a to the power of 3. I'm going to chuck a 1 there. Eight, uh, b, a to the power of 3 plus this 2 then times b to the power of 1 plus this 6. Why am I adding them? Because they have the same base, a to the power of 3 and a to the power of 2. Then you're going to go 2 times 8, which is going to be 16, times a to the power of 5, and then times b to the power of 7. When you simplify this answer, it's going to be 16, a to the power of 5, b to the power of 7. And that is your final answer that question. That's going to be worth two marks, okay? So you need working out. All of them you need working out. Next question. I'm just going to do it up here. So 6p, I'm going to rewrite this, 6p to the power of 7, q to the power of 2, and then you've got 15p to the power of 4, and then q. Now, like I said earlier, you're going to put a power of 1. Just so I know there's a 1 there. Now, can we simplify? Yes. Top and bottom, 6, and then this 15, they can both divide by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Cool. Now I'm going to look at my p's. This is the highest power, so I'm going to cancel that. It's going to be minus 4. Oh, cool. This has got a q now. We're going to look at our q's. q to the power of 2 and q to the power of 1. How do I know that? Because I put the 1 there. Now I'm going to cancel this. It's going to be minus 1. What are you left with now? 2 over 5. Where do we get our 5? This is the hardest part. Once we've crossed them, it's so hard to see things clearly. So you've got to be really careful. You've got to be patient as well. This question, set P, 7 take away 4. So it's going to be P to the power of 3, and then Q to the power of 1. Now, if I left that as my final answer, I'm technically wrong. I've got to simplify it. This is your answer, but you need to simplify it. So it's going to be 2, P to the power of 3, Q, and then 5. We do not write the 1 there. It's like saying 1x when you simplify it's actually x. Okay, so you want to leave your answer like this. You don't write Q to the power of 1. No, we do not want that, even though that's there. So that's not... This is the most simplified answer. So that's how you approach those questions. That's involving the first law and the second law of indices. So that's just a bit of practice. I'm just going to move the camera so you can see the working out there. Um, yeah, and that's how you want to approach it. Yeah.